We are going to create a facing toolpath using simple geometry. So we're going to go to our wireframe menu, rectangle. We're going to create a 6 inch by 4 inch rectangle. I'll anchor it temporarily here. If I want to move my G54 value to this top corner, I simply can go to Transform, Origin, and select that corner. Now it's moved to where I want it to be. I can use my G54 in this top corner. I'm going to clear my colors and select a machine to do our machining. As I do that, it'll create a toolpath group. You can have several in the same document. We'll cover this later. Now we're going to face our part. Using a facing toolpath, select this chain. Confirming the chain. Now we can go to Tool, and I'm going to select one from the library. A 2-inch face mill is what I have loaded in the machine presently. It's in tool slot number 4, so I'll put that here. The rest of the parameters will work, so we'll keep them. we got a hundred thousandths of stock. I'm going to go down to zero from that hundred thousandths. I'm going to select a toolpath method or style. I'm going to say zigzag. I will set my material to leave to zero. You can leave material here if you'd like, but at this point I'm not going to. We get a preview of our toolpath. We'll do a simple back plot. And this shows us a back plot of the toolpath. There was a time when zigzag was my preferred toolpath. At this time, playing with other things and doing different tests, I found that there's better ways for facing. One of the choices here that we have is dynamic. And after doing some test cuts with dynamic, I found it to be a better way to go. It has a couple advantages. It gradually works its way into the part and it prevents you from wearing or chipping teeth on the uh, cutter. It also is very efficient. It's probably one of the more efficient ways to face a part. 